The objective of the lesson was to use a jigsaw cooperative activity where students shared information they read and recorded important concepts. Students were given a graphic or organizer where they filled in the main ideas and details of their assigned readings. Then as a group, they were to present it to the other students. This was not the first time the material was presented to the class. The formative assessment piece was to have the students use whiteboards and expo markers to answer questions being presented by the teacher as they worked. The teacher could then quickly glean who was getting the information down and comprehending the main concepts. Many students enjoyed sharing their answers and working in this format. In this video, 7th grade students are utilizing a peer editing checklist to offer feedback to their peers in regards to their writing. Once students read over the work of their peers and offer suggestions, the papers then return to the original author and they can self-assess and decide whether or not they want to make the changes um, and take the suggestions of their peers. When the final product is turned in to teachers, we are able to refer back to the checklist and see if students took the suggestion of their peers and made some of those very important changes to improve their writing. Since the students have been seeing this peer editing checklist since September, they are used to the format. The only changes that are made are certain expectations depending on what kind of writing piece you're doing. Each student is provided a red, yellow, and green card, cup, or another object. Green indicates I understand, yellow means not sure, and red states I do not understand. Students display the color during instruction and practice, which allows the teacher to gauge how well students understand the concept. The cards can also be used to group students for further instruction, to pair students, or to move students on in the lesson. I graded your test last night. I went through and marked for you all the questions that you had incorrect. You don't know how many points I took off. You don't know how many points each question is worth. I'm going to be discussing points today. We'll discuss those tomorrow. Today, you're going to partner up. I'll help you guys figure out who your partners will be with a neighbor and correct a problem on your paper that you had incorrect but your neighbor had correct. So if we use Duncan and Tay as our example, when they partner up, Duncan's going to look for a problem on his paper that he had wrong but that Tay got correct. And Tay is going to help Duncan. He's not just going to tell him the answer, he's going to explain to him how he got his correct answer and Duncan's going to fix it on his paper. Please do not write on top of your original answer. Please write next to your original answer. So that when I'm looking at it again tonight, I can see your original answer and I can see. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, you're only going to have three minutes with each partner. So Tay's going to try one and then Duncan's going to try and help Tay fix one. And if you have a little more time and you want to fix another one, that's fine. And you're going to rotate to a new partner. And hopefully, after we do this four or five times, your whole paper will be completely corrected. In the past, when I have graded tests the traditional way by marking which problems were wrong and correcting the problems for the students and handing it back to them. I noticed that the kids didn't really look at their mistakes or make any effort to figure out uh, what they had done incorrectly. So I decided to start grading my tests differently um, and having the students correct their own papers with the help of a friend so that they would understand what their mistakes were and hopefully not make them again in the future. Homework Help Board is a formative assessment strategy that we learned about. I start by drawing six boxes on the board since there are six groups. And as each group has their conversation and helps each other through understanding the homework, narrowing down their questions, they each decide one problem that they would like me to do, if they have any. Sometimes groups are able to solve their problems without any issues. So if they have one problem, they will write that on the board in their box that it belongs to their group. Therefore, the other groups in the class can see which problems I'm going to already be doing. So if they have that same question, other groups can pick a different problem that they would like to see. By the end of the time frame, each group will either identify a problem or put an X to indicate that they have finished discussing their homework and are ready to move on. 
When I see that all six boxes are filled in, either with an X or a problem number, then I'm ready to answer the questions of those particular problems. While the kids are working, it frees the teacher to move around the room and check that the students have completed the homework. A Socratic seminar is a form of discussion in which students run the show. After reading a particular article or section of a book, students create questions that are designed for higher level thinking. The questions are designed to elicit good discussions. Once these have been written, students are partnered up. One partner, one pair of the team goes in the inner circle and the other partner goes in the outer circle. While the inner circle is discussing the questions, the outer circle is observing them and writing comments in terms of their level of participation, whether they have referred back to the reading selection. She does it herself. Here's a good question that I am. Where do these kids get these names? Like snake eyes, new it's, it's like basically they're like actions they did or something. Like this kid is probably like... He's probably like the smallest... Yeah, they said he's like... Gentle. After a designated amount of time, the inner circle and outer circle switch so that everybody gets a chance to observe and everyone gets a chance to discuss. After that, partners pair up and discuss their observations with the group. Best composite answer, also known as the perfect paper. Students in a small group build a composite answer by taking the best features of each of their individual answers, making them recognize strengths and weaknesses across the original individual answers. Students who do not originally understand some aspects of the question learn a lot from their peers. In the first picture, you have four kids each working on an activity, and they're trying to decide what they feel is the best answer for each of the options. When each student is finished working on their activity, what they do is they discuss as a group what they feel is the best answer for each of the items. And that creates a lot of discussion and also some reteaching is um, available for each of the kids because as they're discussing, they decide what makes the best answer. And after they've all agreed on what they feel is the best or the best composite answer or AKA the perfect paper, they check it with the teacher who can then decide if they've mastered the concept. Each student is given a mini whiteboard and marker. We arrange the desk in a circle and sit facing each other. We each complete the same problem together, then turn the boards to share our answers. It makes it easy to gauge the student's level of understanding and whether to continue to teach the concept or pair the students with someone who understands. We also made eye contact with a classmate across the circle as a way of peer checking. It seems to be best to use the whiteboards with multi-step problems. We use them with such things as completing long division problems or solving two-step equations.